top deck is actually a little bit bigger. It's about an inch and a half bigger than the bottom deck. So it's gonna give the sides an angle. But what we don't wanna do is actually have to glue down the piece or try to manipulate it. So I'm gonna cut a bunch of strips and we're gonna use those as formers to kind of hold the piece right at the angle. So when we put the glue down, it captures that angle perfectly. That gave us the right spacing to get the right angle. We don't have to do measurements or anything complicated. We just simply pull it tight, even it out, glue it in. We already did the sides, and now what we're doing is we're pulling in each side of the boat to give that classic hall shape. A nice thing about this is since this is nice and flat, everything should be indexed and registered to be able to fit nice and neat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so light. That's a big boat. It is a big boat. People are often overwhelmed when they look at something like a battleship and they try to recreate it in foam board. I've been building out of things like cereal boxes as a kid and something that I learned through the process is what you have to do is take whatever it is that you're trying to recreate. It's easiest to start with the center and build out from there. So I started with the tower and now all I'm doing is creating different shaped and sized boxes, holding them up to different areas around the tower and seeing what might look best. If I need the box to be a little bit smaller, I cut the end off and then I already have a box shape made that I can move somewhere else and I don't have to build another box from scratch. Through this process of creating box after box, holding a few up, some may not work, you eventually piece by piece put something together that turns out looking pretty epic. Jeremy has done an amazing job getting this ready here. And now what we need to do is we need to actually make it controllable because what I want to see happen is when we put this in the water, we can actually turn it and we can navigate it just like a real battleship. We don't have any kind of boat materials. We're an airplane company. I'm going to take a really big motor, put a very small prop on it, and hopefully we are going to have the right amount of thrust to move this back and forth. Jeremy is busy doing the final touches on the battleship, and Josh is getting the power system set up. And I got our two warbirds here. Jeremy let me borrow his P40, and then I have the Corsair here, which was designed by our friend John Overstreet. So we 3D printed these awesome bombs that were actually designed by one of our great community members. What I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be attaching a very simple bomb release mechanism so if the boat floats and if it drives I'm gonna take one of these planes and I'm gonna try to bomb it. I got the double zip tie nine gram servo bomb release mechanism that I just made from scratch here. I'm gonna get a mouthful of radial motor. Hey. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Dude, it has tons of power! Look at that! It turns really good. Wow! Okay, here you go, buddy. It turns great. She's all yours. Let's find something. That's sick. This is awesome. Dude, first RC battleship ever of this size. That looks amazing on the water. Dude, that thing is unbelievable. Here we go. Alright, first bombing run. Okay. I'm just gonna do a pass. Dude, that's awesome! Alright, I think I think we got it lined up here. Moment of truth. Yeah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you got it or not, but it was close enough to make me happy. The boat is a success, the bombing, not close. so much, but overall the whole project has been a success because it's not about getting that contact. It's about making memories with friends. Yeah. That's what we're all about. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you guys next time.